Hi, I'm Suki the Brown Eyed Stitcher and today I'm really excited to present something that's not uh, stitching. <laughs> so I was reached out to, reached out to, I received an email from Diamond Art Club for a partnership and I got really, really excited because I really love Diamond Art Club for their quality and for their knowing that they license their artwork from the artists. So there's no like copyright problems. There's, it's all fantastic quality. The pictures are great. Um, just overall high quality. So what is Diamond Painting? It is basically pixel art, just like we do in cross stitch, but instead we do it with these colorful uh, resin rhinestones, which are very, very sparkly. And you get a canvas that's sticky, and then you put all the rhinestones on it according to the pattern, just like with thread, but it's even faster than stitching with thread. And then you have this beautiful sparkly project when you're done and it's great because uh many ages can do it it's more accessible than cross stitching if you want to get children involved in a craft and it's also something that multiple people could work on this same project like a puzzle could be a family project so could a diamond painting be a family project as well so I thought first I would show you a finished Diamond Art Club that I've done before I show you the one that I have from them to uh, show you the process with. So this one is called Black and White. It is by Deborah Lewis is the artist. And this is what a fully finished one looks like. It's got round diamonds, which are more accessible to beginners than the square diamonds. Um, I say diamonds, uh, resins, rhinestones, drills, diamonds. We kind of use them interchangeably. So please forgive me if I am confusing you on that terminology. Uh, but I wanted to show you what a round diamond and a smaller project looks like because the one I'm going to show you is not either of those. <laughs> they do have even smaller projects than these. I highly recommend searching their website. They have landscapes, animals, fantasy, um, comic characters, I don't know, so many things. I already said animals. Um, people, they do have people as well. Um, geometrics. Um, lots. They have lots. And they're regularly restocking. So if you sign up, like make an account, then you can build a wish list. And if it... And you can and you can say notify me when it's back in stock or something like that and they'll send you an email you can also sign up for their emails and they'll say whenever they do a restock they'll say hey restock and you go and you look and hope that they are available so this is the one i'm showing you today this is how it comes this one came in one box with um air what are they called? Like the air fillers? Why can't I think? Like not bubble wrap, but like the air pockets. Um, so that this wasn't like bouncing around in the box. Uh, you definitely could have fit a whole nother one of these in that box. That's how big that box was. And it comes, this right here will tell you what you need to know it this one is square diamonds and you can see it's in the shape of a square and the other one the circle one has a different shape and a different color I think and then this is the artwork it tells you 
your the name, the artist, the picture, the diamond shape, the size of the um, project. I'm not even going to tell you what those are because I am um, going to open this. I have been waiting to open this. It arrived on Friday and today is Wednesday, so that's how long I have been waiting to open it to show you and to show myself. I wanted to work on it in the middle of the night last night and I couldn't because I hadn't done this yet. Okay, so here comes the plastic wrap. Bring it down. open the top. Okay, so in here we've got a picture. This is actually a sticker that you can uh, use it if you have like a journal in which you keep track of your projects. You could put that there. If you keep your drills separately and you want to notate what projects that's from, you can use this sticker there. Um, if you just, I don't know, have a cooler you like to put stickers on the back of your laptop, I don't know. If you have places you like to put stickers, you can do stickers, but they give you that and that's what this is. This is a sticker. I know I still haven't really told you what it is. Don't worry, we'll get there. They give you this pouch, see toolkit, it's because this has everything that you need to complete a project. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited, but I'm going to open this first. Ooh, this is updated since the last um, kits that I got. So, first of all, you get a tray, okay? It's got lines here. And then a spout. This is an open-ended spout so that you put it like that. You pour your drills in and then you can shake it around. I will show all of you this later um, if you've never done it before. You shake it around so that they sit in these grooves right side up. And then you can use your applicator on them to stick it to your canvas. And then when it's time to pour them back into your bag or your container, that's what this spout is for because then you can pour and it gets all funneled in and it pours and it's so nice. Less stress, okay? Then they give you the applicator. This one is green. It has a single placer on it. Like that's what this tip is. It's the single placer. Um, but it comes with, this has, um, if it's three on it, and this one I think is six, seven. There is a little number, you won't be able to see it, but right here it says seven. Oh, this says four. Sorry, I said three, but it's four right there. Like I said, you can't see it because it's just raised plastic. But these are really easy. You actually stick them on the other end like this. And then you can easily flip flop if you need a single placer or if you need a multi placer. Um, so one of these you might find that you use. It is a little bit tricky to get the hang of the multi placer. So if you just end up using the single placer as a beginner, you're totally fine with that. I did. Almost all of this horse one, I used the single placer for probably 90% of it. Um, but yeah, you just stick it on and there you go. It also has a, like this is one of those pencil grips, so you just slide it on. I probably shouldn't do this, maybe on the other end. You just slide it on, but watch me struggle. She tells you how nice and grippy it is. <laughs> I 
it's almost all the way on, but now I can't move it. Like that. And you can put it on either end. Um, like, if whichever one you use more of, that's the end I would put it on. You can get upgraded ones. Like, these are all plastic. Um, like, you could, I'm not, you could break it. Don't break it. Um, but you can get higher quality pens um, on their website. So it comes with those. It comes with wax. Here's the wax. It's covered with this film on both ends. Um, so you don't, you can peel it off when you're ready to. And this is the first time I've seen this. It's a little case for your wax. So you get two wax things, which is plenty of wax. Trust me. And what you would do is you peel off that top and then you can just set it in here. And when in between, when you're working on it, you close it up like that. Hmm. Both, both of these wax pads fit in there, but I think, um, well, never mind. I don't know. It would work. And how, how you do it is you get the wax in the little nib. I guess maybe this one's going to be easier to see. Like there's like a space here and you would put that in the wax and then you would put it in the drills, which are in this tray and you put it there and then you stick it on your canvas. Um, oh, that's that. Okay. This comes with tweezers, but the tweezers I'm fairly positive only come in the square diamond ones, but Here's what the tips look like. These are very nice tweezers. I really like these tweezers. They feel nice. They say on Diamond Art Club. Um, so if anybody steals your tweezers for some reason, it's labeled. Uh, the, the round diamond kits won't come with the tweezers, but the square ones will. And this is just when you need to shift a drill or take off a drill on a square a square square one uh you have these to be able to do it it comes with these are little bags okay the outside one is actually the size of them and these are for your extra drills when you're done depending on your chart that you have you probably won't have enough bags for all the colors. So just be aware of that when, like, you're not going to want to transfer all of them into here before you get started. But you'd rather just open them one at a time and use it, if that makes sense. Um... I don't have any idea what this little plastic piece is. Oh, the tray stopper. So here is this little, I dropped it. Good thing that wasn't the drills. Okay. So what it is, is it's this little plastic piece and it's a tray stopper. So you can put it here somehow like magic. Should I put it this way? There we go. There's a little lip here and I put that facing down and then it just fits in here. And that way they won't accidentally slide out when you go to shake them. That's really cool. I've not used that before, but it's, it's cool. But it, pop, it comes out very, very um, easily still. So it's in, it's out. And you can see like this part didn't, it didn't like shake it so that your drills don't go all flying everywhere. 
because that would be bad. And then here's washi tape. Washi tape is really good for managing the plastic cover on your kit. Uh, I can, I'll show you that later. But they also, guys, they call this a cover minder. It's basically a needle minder where it's got two magnets. However, this one doesn't have a super, it's not as strong a magnet as I'm used to with my needle minders, but that's because it doesn't have to be, like, we're not putting any needles on here. So what it is, is you have this plastic cover and you have to peel the cover off in order to put your drills on it. But chances are you're not gonna finish the whole thing in one setting because these things are big and unless you don't do anything and you are like James in the, in the giant peach. Is that the one where he lives in the bubble? Anyway, um, you're gonna wanna close it up again. So, so when you fold it back, you can use this to magnet it open instead of having to cut it and things. So you can use this or the washi tape and that's fun. It's nice that they give you these now. You literally have everything you need for a project right here. So that's just fun. Okay. Now, you saw how big this box is, right? It's probably no surprise to you that I like big projects. You know my super size treasure hunt bookshelf diamond art club do what makes you sparkle okay so this is again plastic and in the middle are the drills and the outside is the canvas yes that's a lot of canvas oh my gosh I'm so giddy about this where's my scissors I'm just going to cut it open Now, the question is, do I show you the canvas or the drills first? Oh, I didn't have to cut it because here's the part that you can, it's, here's the sticky part that I could have, like, opened, there you go, and gotten it out. You don't even need scissors, guys. That was just me. You don't need scissors. <laughs> Look at this. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Why do big projects bring me so much joy? Okay. Oh my gosh. I love it so much. Okay, now I will actually show you the artwork. Well, no, first I'm going to say they have a thank you for your purchase. Um, they have QR codes for iOS and Android so you can download their app if you just want a quick way to find it. And then it, it gives you all the information, like what's included in your kit. Here's a QR code so you can watch a video on how to do it if you need another refresher. And then here's written instruction if that's fine for you. Um, or just keep watching this video because I'm literally going to show it to you. Um, they give you tips and tricks for this project. Let's see. Um... Okay, here's where they tell you about washi tape. Um, you can use washi tape to keep the edges of your painting straight and create a decorative border. So if you saw on, now I have to clear this off so I can see it. Let me pull out my finished one now. If you can see, because it, 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 this is the border, uh, you can cover all of that with washi tape and it's still pretty 
and you don't have to like cut it off or fold it over or anything like that. You can just washi it over. Uh, but they do have some other other tips, some of which I've mentioned and some of which I will be mentioning. So, uh, okay. Here is my artwork. It's got it's called Magic Potion. It's by Genovia Art. If if you are one of if you have been on Heaven and Earth Designs, you'll have seen Genovia Art there. And I don't have any of the charts from it, but I saw this one on Diamond Art Club and it's been in my wish list for a while. So I was super excited to um, do it. It's adorable. It gives you a start date and end date so you can write it in if you want to like keep a log of that somewhere. And again, it tells you the information, the squares, the size. And here is this. Oh, here it is. Look at this. Look at the colors! So all those potion bottles, and there's fairies, and the night sky, flowers, books, like... If you've seen my treasure hunt bookshelf, you'll know that this is basically meant for me. Oh, the other thing it gives you are these stickers. These are legend stickers. These are really nice to, if you're putting your drills in an external storage of some kind, or even in the little bags, however, there probably aren't enough little bags for this project because look how many colors there are, plus these ones. It's a lot. But that's what they are. They give you the... Um, the symbol and the color code. The color code does match up to DMC. So it's very easy to take um, cross stitch patterns and get like a blank canvas and do that or you can get a Diamond Art Club who has all of the art licensed artwork and they've done all the work of printing your pattern on the canvas for you. Okay, now that you know the artwork, um, I'm going to show you the, these are resins, the resin rhinestones. Um, oh gosh, okay. Let's just do this. I can't believe how many there are. Look at that. This is just half of them. Okay. So, they come in these strips. Like this whole thing. There. Here we go. See? Long strip. They're connected, but they're really easy to tear or cut apart. I don't, um, I think I had to cut them. Like, they look like they should be perforated, but I don't think they actually are. Um, so I just cut them right here in the middle. But they have the number here that tells you the number to look for here on the key. So, we've got one pack of this, we've got two packs of that color, purples, more blues with different kinds, look at that, white color, gray, red, greens, they do keep the two like next to each other which is nice when you have multiples of the same one. Like, this is 898. Eight. There's five of them right here. I have no idea how many colors there are. There's a lot, and it makes my heart happy because I, I really don't do small ones. Um, like, 
Why do a small project when you can do a huge one? Uh, lots of pinks and grays and blues. And look at that gorgeous turquoise color. A minty color. And you can see like here smaller amounts, um, which is nice. They don't give you like a ginormous amount when you only need a few colors. So another really nice thing is if you don't, for whatever reason, if you run out of drills, you can just email them and tell them like your, if you tell them the SKU number, which is on here and like tell them about your project, tell them which color you ran out of, they will um, send you more. And that information is like on your canvas and work. So um, do you wanna know how much black is in here? It starts here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 huge packs of 310. Ooh, look at this it's darker, like foresty green. It's 699. I should have looked at the color of these purples to see if, nope, they're not. Just wondering if my favorite purple color is in here. Okay, that was one batch of drills. <laughs> Number two. Oh I am so excited about this. Have I said that enough times yet? So here are these ones, lots of yellows and oranges in this set. Beautiful. These these are different colors. This one's a little lighter and that one's a little darker. Dark gray. This is five five zero. Look how pretty it is. the colors just keep coming oh ooh, here is um this is what they call an ab aurora borealis and it's not necessarily going to show but do you see how it extra sparkles okay compared to this one right next to it okay so this has sparkle just because it's um multifaceted and and it, it the way the light hits it makes it sparkle right well, Aurora Borealises have like a special coating that make them extra sparkly. Look at that. So here's one of them. Here's an, another one, this orange. Oh, love it. Oh, look how beautiful. This is 815. Look at that gorgeous color. Um, another oh, AB is this yellow. Come on, sparkle. Sparkle, my lovely sparkle. There we go. Um, ooh, and there's two packs of that one. Lots of sparkle. 718, love this color too. Love my jewel tones. So many amazing colors. Look at them all. Yeah, yeah. Are you ready for the canvas? I don't think I will be able to show this whole thing because look how big it is. See how wrapped it is? And it, it, this is, it's tall. But I'm going to show it to you. So, 
They will have the legend on the side like this. So you don't even have to reference. Like this is so you can put them on your, like, when you transfer the drills into another storage container or bags or something, you use these. And then, but here you can reference this easily. Okay, this is what the canvas looks like on this side. Look at that picture already. Isn't the stamping, like printing, I guess is what it is, amazing? Look at all of this one color right here. This is a very prime example when I would use like that, that seven multi-placer I would use here so I can just like put seven down at a time. Oh my gosh. But then I'd use like a single placer <laughs> here. Look at this. Oh. Yeah, that's how big this sucker is. So huge. Um, it says your canvas comes with a lifetime warranty and a free missing diamonds protection from Diamond Art Club. And then it gives you the email. So it's printed right here on the canvas. Like you can't lose it unless you, for some reason you lose your canvas. But that would be really sad because then you wouldn't have your project. All right. Let's see how much of this I can show you. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm crazy. I own it. I own my craziness. Look at that butterfly. And those hearts inside that bottle. And then you have the legend on the other side as well. So, um, I can't even hold this. <sighs> like, it's longer than my arm span, guys. <laughs> this is why I showed you the horse one. Because if you are new, don't pick this project, okay? Um, it is huge, and you might not like diamond painting. If you, however, know that you like big projects and you already know how to diamond paint, um, this is beautiful and gorgeous and literally can't wait to get into it. But as you can see, this is... Uh, that's why they give you like a cover minder because you're going to peel off, but you don't want to peel the plastic all the way off. You can just peel it a portion, keep it back with your cover minder. Um, and if for whatever reason you find you want a stronger one, just grab one of your needle minders and use that. Um, but that's nice. This is a nice addition. I really like that. And... Now that I have shown you all of this, I can show you how to diamond paint. So, let's get to it. Before we get to it, I wanted to say that I have a coupon code. If you have never purchased from Diamond Art Club before, you can get 20% off your first purchase by using the coupon code SUKI20. That is going to be in the description box along with a link that includes my, my code. Unfortunately, if you've already purchased that from Diamond Art Club before, uh, you can't use this coupon code. However, uh, you know of ways to get other coupon codes that you can access if you've already purchased from them. Um, so if you are brand new to Diamond Art Club, have never bought from them before, uh, use this code to get 20% off and uh, of course show me what project you purchase because uh, hello they're gorgeous 
clearly. Now I'm going to show you how to diamond paint. Okay, we have all of our supplies here. So what I'm going to do is not work like this. I have scissors also so I can cut the bags open. I want to start in this corner up here with how big this canvas is this corner is a little bit difficult to reach when it is like this on my desk so I'm actually going to turn the canvas so that this is more manageable now I can work anywhere here that I really wish to my key is right here. Again, I have these stickers that I can use and I totally just peeled a couple off. My bad. Where's the other one? <gasps> I'm missing a sticker. That's 100% my fault. It is probably attached to a bead pack somewhere. Okay, well that's sad. It's number 26 and a good thing it is right here. It's this Y601. I will keep an eye out for that, but that is definitely my fault. But that tells you how, um, just be a little careful with these. I didn't have trouble with the other ones. And once you stick them on your little bags, they don't come off. They do adhere really well to these. So I am a little overwhelmed with where to start exactly simply because do I start with the black or do I start with some of the other colors and then fill in with the black? I think, um, you know what, let's, let's work on this just like green section, maybe down in through here, get some black. That's what we're going to do. So here, this is this anchor color. It's number 21, number 407. So now I need to find that among all of my colors. One thing I could have done is to separate these out and put them chronological. Um, actually, that's a really good idea. Let's do that. all apart I left like colors attached so that they're just easier to manage what I did have to separate them into uh, the numbers into the 500s um, this pile is the 3000s and this is in between like starts at 600 and before the 3000s so those are just gonna make it easier to file away this way.
These are now sorted in their hundreds. For Diamond Art Club, their 100s are their Aurora Borealis colors. So it looks like there are five different Aurora Borealis colors and two of the yellow ones here. So now this will make it easy for me to get them into my bin I grabbed. I will probably do it this way. And now I can just, I'll fold these front and back. Oops, these should all be attached, but Oh, I know why. This this was at the end of one row, and this was at the beginning of another, and that's why they got or not, not attached. This is fun. 600, 601, 602, 603, and 604. Beautiful. have no idea how many colors there are. Oh, you know what? I'm ridiculous because it tells you the numbers. 71. 71 beautiful, gorgeous, amazing colors. I am simply going to set these colors to the side where I can access them. Easily. I've got my little bags here. And here's my toolkit. I'm not going to use the washi tape right now. I will leave the tweezers out. We'll see about that. I probably won't use this one. Um, I'll just, I'll use the big placer or the single placer. I will use all of those. Okay, remember we have the stopper in here. Have our wax let's set our wax up we'll take one of these little pats and they've got that plastic on both sides you just need to take one side off just like that you won't need this really anymore I'm just gonna set that right back in here with this the wax side up it'll be protected from with this lid. If you didn't have one of these little containers, then just keep the wax, um, it's not wax, but keep the top cover and just peel it off to use it. That's another way. And, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. I still need to put drills in here. I was going to find number 21, which is 471. And that is now really easy to find because not only is it in color or number order, but I know it's green, so I can go immediately to that green section.
I'm just going to snip off a little corner here. And I'm going to pour in here. Maybe I will use that washi now because let's see how well this works. I don't want to leave the bag open, but I don't yet want to transfer it into a little bag. Just going to fold it over a few times. Tape it closed. Perfect. I'm just going to set this to the side, but I'm not going to file it away yet. And now we've got our beautiful drills. So if you shake them like that and then kind of knock them towards the back of the tray. Look at that. So we've got our drills, we have a lot of them face up. We've got some just flipped around and that's okay. I can use these face up ones and then shake it again. How many drills you put in the tray, totally per personal preference. I don't like to put too many because when I shake it, I don't want to risk it catapulting everywhere. Okay, I'm going to get some uh, wax on and all you do is you jab it in. first one is the hardest, I think. You probably can't see that very well, but there is now wax inside the tip. I have to use a different camera for this part, so my apologies. Now our cover minder How we use this is just like a needle minder. We're going to peel back and expose. I'm actually going to expose so I can get all the way down here. We're going to leave the decorative part up top and this other flat end of the magnet. See, there's two magnets on here and they attach to each other. So we're going to leave one up top and the other one down below and they find each other and now your plastic is going to stay. Oh, that's beautiful. So now let's try this. You just dab it, pick it up, and place it. The reason round diamonds are easier than square is because Imagine putting squares right next to each other. They have those very flat edges, and so if they're not perfectly straight, then they're just not going to sit right. So getting some experience with round diamonds first is a good idea. That way, if for whatever reason you get frustrated, it's easier to handle the round ones. A tip I've learned is to, with the squares, is go every other one in like a checkerboard style. And then you can go back and fill in between them. And that just helps them lay really nice. And 
I have to agree with that. If I were to use a multi-placer with the square drills, I would do every other row instead of every other drill. One thing to remember is that this is all sticky, which is why you have a cover. So you don't want to place your hand down on it all that much. So think about where, if you're left or right handed, you may want to start in a different corner of your diamond painting in order to not feel like you're resting on stickiness. That's why I am starting on this side is because then as I move this way, if I touch down in any way, I'm more likely to touch down on drills rather than rather than the sticky part. I really like diamond painting for times when times when I want sparkle, yes, but also times when I don't want to think very much. As a cross stitcher, especially a cross stitcher with plenty of large projects. I have to reference the pattern like we do. But what makes the diamond painting really nice is that the pattern is printed onto this canvas and let me just straighten this a little bit. That's better. And so it's a lot easier on my brain when I want something easy to do. Another tip for diamond painting is if you have a light pad, you can put that underneath your canvas and shine the light up through it. I find I don't need it. I've tried it once or twice. Didn't love to do it that way. But I did, wouldn't have known it until I tried it, that's for certain. just did that row without checkerboarding because this is my first time with square diamonds and I just forgot. But they laid down pretty nicely so that's okay. The wax, if you remember we put that on at the beginning I have not had to re-wax yet you'll know when to re-wax because your drills just don't want to pick up anymore but as long as you're able to just pick them up like this you don't need to re-wax at all I also find the movement 
of getting the drills and setting it into place to be very mentally soothing. It's, it's like I can just, I can zone out a little bit. I don't have to think about, I don't have to look at a separate pattern. So that's one less thing mentally. And it's a different motion from cross stitch. Which I also find very soothing. To do that kind of repetitive motion over and over again. This is like that just with a different motion. Another really cool thing about diamond painting is if you miss a place where a color goes, and you've done all the surrounding ones and you just missed a spot, it's not a big deal to pull out that color when you discover it and put it in. It's very different from cross stitch where if you find one of those stitches, you're either going to fudge it in some way, use a different color that's already on your thread, needle I mean, or you have to pull out a whole new color, thread, thread it up and get going. Now I have a couple of drills in here I put in a little bit wonky, so the tweezers here are, they are very thin as you can see so that you can just get in here and skewed it right well that was easy you don't have that problem with rounds so much because, you know, they're circular, they're not, they don't have the straight edges of the square. All right, I finished this color all up in the leaves, which is pretty cool. Now I'm going to come down here to, I don't know, this bobbly thingy. And when I get this color in all down here. I will show you putting away a color. When you finish a section like this, just take a look and if there's any drills that just aren't quite straight on, you can fix them. But again, if you have a round diamond kit, you won't need to do that extra step. I am happy for my first kit that I had a round drill kit. because then it gave me the experience without the worry that I would have felt in doing squares right off the bat. But having done round and now doing square for the first time, you know, diamond painting isn't a new act altogether for me. So doing the squares isn't 
very intimidating. I'm able to adjust using the knowledge that I've already gained. When I finished my first diamond painting, I saw how many diamonds I had left over, which was great. I never felt like I was going to run out. There was one color I was short about 15 or 20, and I actually was able to get those drills from a friend who had exactly that color in the round style. So I didn't go through the contacting process, but it was only one color out of that entire pack. I had plenty of drills for everything else. I think it would be cool with leftover drills rather than just throwing them away or something like that or keeping them you know just in case since the company will send you anything missing I would love to get maybe blank sticky canvas I don't know if that exists but I kind of assume that it exists somewhere and then I could do my own design with those leftover colors. Maybe something abstract or something. I don't know. I think that would be very, very lovely. and a way to use more diamonds rather than just create additional waste. Okay, there is all of that color done. So because I'm just going to show you how to use everything in the kit with this project, because you really don't need anything extra except a pair of scissors, I'm going to sure I have that open again. Take out this stopper. You know what? What I'm going to do is actually, before I take out the stopper, I'm going to kind of bring them down here. Totally just knocked some out, but it's pretty easy to pick up. There you go. Now, if I remove the stopper, they're already down by the spout. Stick that spout in the opening, make sure it's actually in the opening, and then gently scoop the drills back in. So let me just do this by hand, and I spilled, it looks like three, let's see if I can get them on my finger in here. Ideally you don't spill, but you know, there's that. I can just close it back up the way I did before. Got the washi tape right there. And I can put this away and move on to another color.
Here's a, something interesting I found. Uh, you won't really be able to see it, but there's like a darker one right there. It's actually a round drill instead of a square drill. So I'm just going to set that to the side and throw it away later. In that case, it's a single. It's Sometimes you'll find um, trash drills. Just drills that didn't cut right or are still stuck together in a way that you can't separate them or the wrong color it, like that one was. It was the wrong, it was a different green and it was round instead of square so there's nothing to do about that. I can just throw them out. I haven't seen them yet in this square but in my round kit sometimes there were like tiny rounds or they weren't um, mounded as high as they should have been or I don't know what happens in that process of, of making drills or whatever but sometimes you have ones like that and you just throw them out that's all they are trash drills okay there's a couple spots on here I want to just straighten up a little bit. But it's looking so good already. Uh, my camera has been filming this portion for one hour. So in that hour I separated the drills and have done two, almost two full colors um, in this section since I've got a little bit down here to do. Not that it's looked like an hour on your end because I will have sped up sections of this process already but just so you know about how long it's been but also so you can see how fast a project like this actually goes diamond painting is very fast and easy I haven't even re-waxed though I think I'm getting close to needing to. Just definitely not there yet. Oh, it looks so good. Can you, you can see, look at that sparkle. And these aren't even the Aurora Borealis ones. They're just cut in such an amazing way for the light to reflect. And give you this beautiful piece. Now on the website, when you go and look, you will see on each project page uh, a drill count, and that is a total number of of drills in a in a project. So that will give you a good idea of how, just how large something is. This project, the dimensions in inches is 66.1 inches long or wide 
and 23.6 inches tall. So practically two feet tall and oh, 66. How many feet is that? Uh, one, two, five. It's a little more than five feet. And there is that color green finished. If you are outside of the US and you use centimeters, it's 168 centimeters by 60 centimeters. The square ones get caught a little bit more than the round ones do in trying to come out, so be patient, be gentle, and you won't have a volcano of drills all over. That would be sad. Keeping them in these bags is not ideal. I find that they're a bit of a hassle once you open them. They're, uh, they are a bit of a pain to deal with, but it's not impossible. If you don't need other supplies in order to do one of these projects. So even if you do see like any I don't know, fancy storage system or whatever, like, you don't need to have them, but you might find out that they're just a lot better. <laughs> better in terms of ease than using that. All right, I am going to keep working on it. One thing I might do is pull out some black. That's what all of this sky is going to be, um, because there are a lot of <clears throat> black. <laughs> How many bags do I count? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12. 12 bags of black. I don't want to leave all of that to the end, so I might pour some black out in here, like not a ton, and then lay those out. You know what, let's do that now since I will use the multi-placer for that. And since there's so many bags of 310, I'm going to just pull the whole thing out or cut one all the way off, rather, just for ease. Let's put the stopper back in. So I'm just going to put some in here and I'll do all of this amount before going to another color. That is just to keep my own personal sanity so that I don't go crazy trying to do all of it at the end of a section or all at once. Oops, see I put my hand down on the sticky part without even realizing it. Okay, so this multi-placer is a 7. I have never ever used a 7 before, so this could definitely be interesting. First, I need to wax up. I'm going to rub it back and forth, try to get this wax on it. This wax is not acting quite the same. That's okay. We'll make it work. Don't be afraid to manhandle it like that. Now you can see it's all wax. Uh, it's 
So you can see I got a whole row here. Ta-da! You might find that they're not exactly in line. It's a little harder, and this is seven, but it'll be pretty good. And you don't have to do all all seven. Uh, you could do a smaller amount on here if you needed to. I'm just gonna place this right next to it. Like this next one, I think I just want to do a set of three. So I'm just going to grab three and place them down. And this next one is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. You can see how that's much faster than the uh, single placer. And even if you do have to go and straighten any up, which I'm even not even going to straighten the black, I'm straightening this green over here. Even if you did have to go and straighten it up, it would. Like I just placed several of them. That's what you don't want to have happen. Okay. That's okay. I just picked it up the wrong way. I'm going to get the outliers. <laughs> the ones that are not on the sticky part. Then I will get any on the plastic because that's these are easy to slide like this. Okay. Now, there's quite a few on here. I bet you the tweezers will be quicker. The tweezers have a really nice grip on the drills. That's what lets them be shiftable when you're straightening them out. And it's not going to scrape away the, the glue on the surface. just so many right here I wish I think I can just scoop some of them up because they're right next to each other well now that I spilled this everywhere I think you have now seen everything there is to know <laughs> about diamond painting <laughs> Some of these are standing up on edge. That's how great this glue is 
on the canvases to hold the drills. All right. Oh, in this one, in that one. Okay, I got it. I can also slide this if I wanted to in. It's fine where the mic. There it is. Um, since I'm working with just black and there's so much of it, I don't need all of it exposed. All right. Now that that exciting bit is over, so I just picked up six, but I do want seven, so I'm just going to go find another one and then kind of straighten them out. Remember, I've never used this big of a multi-placer before, so definitely a first experience, especially with the square drills. Look at how dark that is. So this is like in the corner. It's a little hard to get the multi-placer right there. But I'm sure that as I get more experience, I can get that right where I want it to be. See, I have five on here, so let's put it right up here. And there's no requirement to use a multi-placer. If you find it frustrating, just single place. When I first started experimenting with the multi-placer, I gave it a try and then I just I took a break and when I felt like it I went back and did more so I just alternated so here's just a piece of like random that's just trash Put it off to the side. So here, like you can see, you can just I'm checkerboarding. But if you have round drills, you don't need to checkerboard. Now, if I were going to use other supplies other than came in the kit, what I would actually do is grab my my other pen here. I look, I'm not even using like this grip because remember how it was like stuck up here? I haven't even been using that. Um, it definitely feels more comfortable to use that grip. But I would grab my other pen and have the smaller placer on it which it, it is, the four, the size four. And then I would be able to have a single place, a four place, and a, 
the seven place and I wouldn't have to exchange this on and off to go back and forth. Let's see, where do I wanna, let's even that up. And that would give me um, a smaller tip to put into some of these, like some of these areas, like in here or in through here. Because while I can do four with it, it's not like the best, you know? You're like, eh. And that, look how good that looks. That looks so amazing. I have two more of these green colors to do still. There's also, uh, well, there's two here, and there's an even lighter one, and then there's like a yellowish color in the leaves. Okay, so just this stopper, I wonder if there's a better way to put this in that doesn't make me nervous. Okay. What if I put it in this way? So I just put it so that the tall bit was up here and I feel like that might be better. Because then when I go to pick it up like this, it's, it's easier, I think. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Let's give that a try. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I want to raise it up one more. Okay, so now I have seven, so I could just fill all of this in if I get a full seven. Let's try every other row. Hitchhiker. And it's just that one didn't place the best. A little too high. All right, now I'm going to go back and fill it in. It's so satisfying. Oh, look at that. So, so good. That one's not placed all the way down. There we go. So good. Gonna Go on there very 
very smoothly at all. The less there are, it's obviously harder to get as many as you need in a row with a multiplacer. At this point, if I were doing just like a whole big, big, big section and I didn't care, I would just pour more drills out. But I just want to finish the black that's in here and then I want to move on to another color before coming back and doing black. That just gives me some variety. This project is so big that I could definitely break up the colors I do in the same area and be just fine. I'm finally going to re-wax my single placer. Any extra wax that gets caught up, I just like to use my finger and put it away. Also, since I won't be working with any of the ABs on film, because they're the numbers one through five and I don't see any of those in this section. I see threes in here, a lot of, a lot of the threes. Here's twos and fours. So there'll be some of those Aurora Borealises in here. There's one, which is the blue, and that one, one, that's fun. Uh, but since I won't be doing it on camera, I just thought I'd let you know. I don't like using a freshly waxed pen with the Aurora Borealis because those ones are code, coated with something extra in order to make them that extra sparkle. And that coating tends to stick to the wax. And so I can place down using it, but it will leave a wax remnant on the drill sometimes. And I just don't love dealing with that, so. not the worst thing but I do try not to use a fresh wax on that I will keep working on it and I will come back and show you what more of this being done looks like so you also can fall in love with this diamond painting. Maybe not this one specific, although if you do, I highly recommend it, but uh, diamond painting is so fun. I love it. It's a good addition to my craft as a cross stitcher and it's beautiful. Can't wait to show you more. 
Okay, look at how much I've done so far. And I didn't even see this little fairy creature until I was done because I am working on this sideways and close up. It just, you don't see the picture <laughs> when it's that big. So I've been using the cover minder with the plastic like that. I just like peel it back however far and then I use the cover minder. But I wanted to uh, use this washi tape and show you a different way of working with this plastic if you've got a large enough piece you know or your brain just needs sections so what I'm going to do is so I'm I'm going to work down here my in my mind what I'd really like to do is work down and get the candle and this flower done but we'll see uh, so what you can do is take this tape and line it up where the line, wherever the line is that you want to stop at. And just put this down. Now the question is, here is where the, uh, I don't know it looks like that's where this this stops but I'm just gonna keep going for now because I can always change this if I wish to My project is sliding I'm just gonna go all the way down here Okay, and then I don't need scissors because this is washi tape and washi tape can just come off. Now I don't know why I didn't go all the way up because what I'm actually going to do is cut this. And I don't really need to go all the way up, but uh -huh. I... I'm a completionist. So let's do that. Okay, so now I have this whole long line. Now the other thing that you can do with washi tape um, while I'm talking about it is that the glue goes um, out just a little bit and I have some like hairs stuck in it. So what I can do to kind of prevent that from being a thing is covering it like that. If you lay it right up, you'll hit that extended glue and you won't get little hairs caught in it like I've been doing. Washi tape tends to be see-through, but uh, depending on your pattern, it's going to make a difference. I will eventually need to do down here, but I won't for now, just because I don't, I don't need to for now. Okay, so now I've got washi tape here. As you can see, I can still see my numbers, so it's easy for me. And I have one layer of washi tape here. Um, I'm not going to section out the rest of this because it's not needed. Also, fun fact, I have emptied an entire bag of black. That is what all of this, this uses so much black and that's a whole bag worth. Okay, so what I do now, and this might be a little awkward for me, but 
I'm gonna make it work, is I'm gonna cut with scissors along the edge of the washi tape. Um, I don't wanna use something like an X-Acto because I don't wanna ruin my canvas. So I'm just gonna cut scissors. I'm gonna get in my light source here so there'll be a shadow, I'm sorry. Good news is it glides real easy. Just peel it up some. That'll make it easier too. Okay, I will, I can cut more later. I didn't even really need to cut that much, but that's okay. So what this allows is it gives me a straight edge where I can see the edge of the plastic and this plastic can stay down and here I can see what's open outside of this plastic. But then I can also move this plastic down and expose what I, how much, however much I want and then I can just flip it back up so that the sticky part always stays covered up. And then because washi tape is reusable, I could just reuse this same washi tape and put it in the next section, however big I want that next section to be when I get to that point. But this is what I'll do for now and come all the way down here and we'll just keep going. I have a whole section here to show you on this. Look how good that looks. This gives you a really good idea of the size of this lovely, lovely project. So I did work on it sideways and it really wasn't until I would take a picture or step back that I could see some of this like, what exactly was I doing? All, all I knew was, you know, we had these swoopy thingies and then it wasn't until I got the drills in and stepped back that I could see this beautiful fairy. My daughter named her Claire. <laughs> and then later on, look, I knew I was doing a candle and the candlestick, but it wasn't until I was done that I saw this, the candle wax. Isn't that incredible? There are some of the Aurora Borealises in here. There's, there's three right up in here, so you can't see those very well, but there's several here in the candle. And I don't know if you can see how they sparkle just a little bit more on the candle and then also like around the ring here. But they sparkle a little bit different. Oh man. If you haven't diamond painted ever, but you love sparkle, you really should try it because, oh man. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? So yes, you can see exactly where I've stopped and where I started and Look, look at the difference. You can see the picture here, but look at the difference in like the saturation of the color and the sparkle when you have those drills in. Okay, here it is. The uh, full thing that I've done, as you can see, there's so much canvas here. If you have not ever purchased from Diamond Art Club before, but you would like to do so, then I am going to put the my link and my code in the description box down below. It is Suki20. I do make a small commission off of your purchase. So if you wish to support me in this channel in general or my, I don't know, love of diamond painting in specific, then I would really appreciate if you are considering purchasing from Diamond Art Club or getting started in a diamond painting um, in hobby, then I'd appreciate if you used my code. 
And I think that is everything. Thank you so much for Diamond Art Club for reaching out to me for this partnership. I have really, really, really enjoyed it. And now I have another diamond painting to um, be able to work on. And it is gorgeous. I can't wait to see it done. You know, whenever I get to it, you know how this goes. If you have watched any of my regular cross stitching videos. So time to edit all of this footage and get it to you. Much love and I will see you around.